Thank you. Yeah, it was about half three in the morning, and, um, and it was like, Mom, you're speaking. So, okay. So I will try and get through, and uh, because I can see the time is, is getting there. But there was one thing the Lord really put on my heart when, when I did the quick help prayer early in the morning, was like, Lord, I need something quick. Give me something. And, um, and this was um, about the prophecies. Because it's a very powerful thing, prophetic words. I didn't say pathetic, I said prophetic. Prophetic words. And, um, and, and it was something, we went to a conference, didn't we, Sylvia, yesterday as well, and, and, and it was a prophetic conference. And it's just really resonated with me. And the three things that came to me was three words that have been spoken over 2018. And I just wanted to kind of like share them quickly with, with, with you guys. And um, the first word was from Drs. George and Hazel. And they shared on, on how it is a time of preparation. And their words were, prepare, prepare, prepare. And, and I thought that was very timely. And, um, and then he said also, this is the year of advancement. It's not a year of stopping. It's not a year of sitting. It's not a year of lack. It is a year of advancement. And I kind of really sort of, when I heard them saying it, I was sitting out in the garden, the poor neighbours. I was sitting out in the garden, I was like, Yes! I am advancing. <laughs> and it's like what you prepare for now is the harvest that you will be reaping. Yeah. Okay? So it was kind of got me thinking and I was like, okay. And then yesterday there was another word. So I'm going to share this word with you. The lady got up and she turned around and she said, the breaker is here. I was like, oh, yes, I will receive that. The breaker is here. And then and it went into Micah 2.13. And I'm going to read two versions of this because I couldn't decide which one I liked the best. So um, the breaker is here in Micah 2.13. It says, Then I, God, will burst all confinements and lead them out into the open. They'll follow their king. I will be out in front leading them. The breaker has gone up before you. Isn't that a wonderful one? I read that at like four o'clock this morning. I was like, whoa. I didn't need caffeine this morning. <laughs> that just did it for me. But when I went in and I researched into the different other versions and I went into the amplified version, it says, the breaker, the Messiah, who opens up the way, shall go up before them, liberating them. <coughs> liberating them. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out. So their king goes on before them before them and the Lord is at their head isn't that wonderful if you could just picture that you know the Lord is gone before you the breaker is gone before you he has liberated you he has set you free and then it kind of like sat there and I was thinking wow you know the Lord has burst us all out of our confinements all them limitations when you're saying the limitations them worldly things it was like no it's gone you know it's gone and then I thought about the word breakthrough, and I'm a bit of a one where I have to look at words and look at the meanings and stuff, and, and, um, and, and what better to do than go on Google. So I went to the Webster Dictionary, and the definition of this, it kind of makes me giggle. It's a military movement all the way through and beyond the enemy's front line of defense. Yeah. <laughs> through and beyond the enemy's front line defense. It's the overcoming of every obstacle, barrier, and hindrance to progress. Again, I read that and I was like, oh, yes, Lord. We'll have some of that. And it says, breakthrough is not the end. Yeah. Breakthrough is not the end. It's like you're all like, breakthrough. Yeah, we got it. Yay. What do we do now? It's not the end. Breakthrough is the beginning. When an army breaks through the enemy's front lines, through the defense lines, they don't just sit down, have a party, and go, right, let's go home. See you later. It's not. When you look into your history and into the world, they go in, they break through the enemy's front lines, they take back the territory, yeah. they start to rebuild, they start to restore, they start to equip the people, they start teaching the people, they start building, and healing comes. Yeah. Healing comes because the captives have just been set free. So breakthrough is not a place for us to stop. When it says we go through and beyond, breakthrough, you don't stop there. That's your starting point. That's like, yeah, we just got here. Let's carry on. Let's build. Okay? So 
when it says about, I'm going to use healing. Healing is a point. When we receive our healing, we don't just go, great, sit down. No, that's a starting point. That's a breakthrough starting point, And it's going, right, Lord, you have anointed me with the most awesome testimony that I'm going to go out there and preach the word and tell them that my God healed me of all my diseases and he can do exactly the same for you. So that's going through and beyond. Through and beyond. You've just gone through, grabbed hold of it, and you're carrying on. You're not stopping. And then, um, see, God kind of like really wants the church to get that kind of breakthrough mentality. And, and, and I love being part of Victory because um, we as Victory are an apostolic, ground-breaking, pioneering, five-fold ministry church. That is what it is based on. That's what it's based on. We are part of a pioneer, grassroots, apostolic and prophetic movement with a strong church planting heart which is purpose driven. We are in 43 nations around the world, multiplied hundreds of churches, colleges, orphanages, schools, much more. That is a breakthrough mentality and we are part of that. We are part of that family. That's what we're here today, that's what we're part of. So we can have two choices. We either break down, settle for our circumstances, or break through. Break through. And then the third word, this is the last word I wanted to share. Third word, a, a lady come forth and she turned around and she says, the nations are at a tipping point. Tipping point, which we can understand Brexit and everything, you know. So when our nation is a tipping point. I kind of like got thinking over the tipping point again. Google, love it. The Google translation is, it's the point when something becomes irreversible and unstoppable. It occurs because momentum builds up often slowly and quietly until the point where it becomes impossible to go back to its previous state. You all follow me? Yeah? So this lady went to an intercessor and she says, can you simplify that for me. I'm so glad she shared it because it was like, can you please simplify it for me? And it says, if we are to go out and lift a heavy object, and they use the analogy of lifting or tipping over a car. I've seen the, the, um, the strongest man competitions and, and, and they've done these kind of things. And it says, this is what you would do. You would get under it and you would first lift it. Then as you're lifting, you see them have to come to a point where they have to shift their position and push. Okay? So it's lift, shift, position and push. When I kind of looked at that and I was going, I was saying, well, yeah, lift. You know, we get under it and that's the submission to God. That's the complete surrendering. It's, it's saying, Lord, you know what? Your name is above every name in my circumstance. And then the lifting, and it was so, it just come to me in the lifting, and it's like, pick your Bible up. Yeah. Pick your Bible up. Lift that word up every day. And it takes discipline. Honestly, it really does take discipline. I'm, I have to really kick my butt every day for that. So it's like, lift, get under it, submit to God, lift that word up every day. Read it, get into it. And then it says, shift position yourself. This, to me, was positioning ourselves into a place of knowing who we are in Christ. Yeah. It's knowing that full inheritance that we have in Christ. So I can stand securely knowing who I am. So I'm going to shift myself, position myself, and then I am going to do... All I'm going to do is stand. I am going to persevere, and I am going to stand. And that's kind of like... When you push to that point, we call the tipping point, there's something that happens. All the work that you've done, all the pressure, brings you to a point where two things can happen. So you think about it, circumstances come to us, yeah? And we're there, we submitted, we lifted up the word of God, we've positioned ourselves, and we're just standing. 
And then all of a sudden, two things can happen. Either that thing you've been pushing, at that tipping point, either that thing you've been pushing, you suddenly think, oh, I can't do it no more, I'm too tired. I just settle where I am, you know. What's the point? Can either come falling back on you, or by its own momentum, suddenly, everybody say suddenly. suddenly. I was just checking you're awake. Suddenly, the very thing that was pushing against you begins to work for you. Okay? The words of prophecies. Everybody's had a word of prophecy. I, 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 well, I hope, yeah? If not, go see somebody in the church. Ask them to pray for you, okay? Words of prophecies, scriptures. We've all got those scriptures that we cling on to. The prayers. These are the things we speak out. These are the things that we're pushing through with. Okay? Then all that was against you turns around for good. That becomes your testimony. It becomes groundbreaking. It's restoration. When you go out and you share what has happened to you in that groundbreaking moment, you are setting the captives free by your testimony. Okay? You have the, the ability to set captives free, open blind eyes, seeing the lame walk. We have all that within us. These three words resonated with me as we go through 2018. Because what we're preparing for now, what we're speaking out, believing, stirring up, activating in our lives, what we break through, persevering, and go through and beyond taking back what the enemy has stolen, as we shift and position ourselves in our true identity, walk and understand, receive revelation of our inheritance, we will see what the enemy meant for bad, God turns for good. God turns for good. And he turns it for good because his glory will shine. His glory comes forth from it. I'm just going to read from Romans 8, 28. It says, So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. I love that, designed purpose. It's not an accident. He designed the purpose of your life. Okay? For he, know, he knew all about us before we were born and he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. This means the son is the oldest among a vast family of brothers and sisters who will all become just like him. Having determined our destiny ahead of time, as we read in the beginning, the breaker goes before us. He's determined our destiny ahead of time. He called us to himself and transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone he called. And those who possess, grab hold of, his perfect righteousness, he co-glorified with his son. It's just absolutely amazing. And, and like Chris came up and she said, you know, we're not looking at the, the outward stuff. And it was like... It's sort of like not becoming worldly thinkers. Take our mind off being worldly thinkers and start becoming kingdom thinkers. Yeah? So when the world, like it says, but the Lord, the doctor's report wasn't good. Worldly thinking. Let's shift ourselves into the kingdom thinking. He says, you know, God says, I have healed all your diseases. I have. No, I'm going to. I have healed all your diseases. Shift your worldly thinking to your kingdom thinking. But the Lord, my account, bank account, it's not very good this week. Kingdom thinking. I am the supplier of all your needs. You've heard from Laura this morning through a testimony. I am the supplier of all your needs. You lack nothing. But Lord, my future seems a bit hopeless, you know. I know the plans I have for you. And it is full and dripping of hope. Yeah. Disaster will not befall you. Okay? But Lord, I feel a bit of a failure this week. But he says, I started a good work in you. 
and I will make sure it is completed. I will make sure it accomplishes the very thing that I purposely designed you for. Okay, Philippians 3, 12 to 16, it says, I admit, I, I love this scripture, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and wants me to discover. Okay? I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus, shift from the world. I have one compelling focus, Jesus is my focus. Kingdom thinking is my focus. I'm lifting the word up, that's my focus. Okay? I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. When he went to the cross, your past, gone. You are a new creation. Stop looking back at it. Stop letting it hold you back. How can you run if you're constantly looking back? You're going to bang into something. I've done it many a times before. It's embarrassing. It's horrible. I did it outside the primary school and I dropped the kids off. I walked, bang, straight into a lamppost because I wasn't walking where, looking where I was going. That's what happens when we look at the past. We're a bit blinded to what God's had for us in the future and we can miss out on things. So it says, I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. <laughs> so let all who are fully mature have this same passion. Do you have that passion? Need a bit of dynamite? <laughs> Do you have that passion? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, you're awake. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. God will reveal it. I think it, it's in um, Jeremiah 33, 3, where it says, Call to me and I will answer you. I will show you the great mysteries. Yeah? So God will reveal it to you. And let us all advance together. We're not loners here. We all advance together to reach this victory prize following one path, not a dozen, one path with one passion. That was an amazing scripture that really ministered to me this morning. And so the three words that I, I kind of went over them was prepare, prepare, prepare. What you prepare for is the harvest that you're going to get back. What are you doing? How are you lifting the word up? How's your prayer life? How's your relationship with Christ? These are the times to prepare. These are the times to get under it, to start picking it up and start just positioning yourself to know who you are in Christ. Because the breaker is here. The breaker is here. Remember, he has gone before you. Okay? He is busting out the confinements on your life. He is busting out the restrictions and the limitations on your life. That is not part of your promise. So then you can go through, hit your breakthrough, beyond and start preaching it all your circumstances God is faithful God is faithful thank you Lord persevere and you will see the supernatural at work manifested so you're taking your eyes off what the world is saying, off what the reports are saying, off what the bank account's saying, and you're checking into your inheritance, kingdom thinking. Okay? You're shifting your focus. And we are pulling the supernatural into the natural. We are going to see heaven on earth because God has a perfect will and a plan for our lives. Isn't that amazing? 
So I just thank God that it's just, this year is going to be a year where we just tuck in, start preparing. What is it we want to see a breakthrough in our lives? What is it we want to see manifested in our lives? Start doing it. And the one thing when I sat there, I, was, I was thought, no, I need an hour, Lord, before, work, before, before church. I need an hour. And, and then a ping in my head, it just went, yeah, but do you see, Jane, <laughs> the position from lifting the car to the shifting to there? Okay? We go from being bent over Sometimes the circumstances in life can push us down. But if we're shifting and positioning ourselves, our focus, like we sang today, I raise a hallelujah. No matter what the storm rages around me, I am going to lift your name. No matter what everyone is saying about me, I'm going to lift your name because it's only you that counts in my life, Lord. It's only you that break throughs in my life, Lord. It's only you that I want in my life, Lord. And I'm going to stand and raise a hallelujah. And my focus is on you. My focus is on you. Thank you. Here you go. Amen.